in the person of the most honorable and humble Elijah Muhammad. I want to thank Brother Benjamin out at the outstart for doing a wonderful job at opening up our eyes and giving us a, a good preliminary basic understanding of the aims and the objectives of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And also, and I'm thankful to Allah for seeing so many out here tonight, especially just before Christmas, you know, uh, it's next to a miracle when you get uh, this many of our people together so close to Christmas, interested in anything whatsoever that's serious. But and actually what this shows is the change that's uh, taking place among the so-called Negroes, not only here in New York, but throughout America, throughout the entire world. Throughout the entire world today, dark mankind is waking up and, under, and uh, undergoing a new type of thinking. And this new type of thinking is creating new approaches and new reactions that make it almost impossible to figure out what the black man is going to do next. All right, so I'm back again. I'm back again for another video. And I wanted to talk about a few things um, in this video related to what you just heard and related to um, my uh, either my last video or the video before last. And um, I think it's important that we at least have the conversation where it's going to lead to. Well, nowhere, as usual with black people. You know, we're stuck somewhere that we're not going to be unstuck from until most of us are dead. And the rest of us are in severe pain somewhere, dirty and stinking and damn near starving in a FEMA camp, you know, where, and where they have nothing off for us but a bottle of water and a, you know, a cup of soup a couple of times a day. We're not going to be happy until we're at, in that place. Nothing's going to wake us up. Nothing is going to make us move uh, for real uh, besides a condition like that. And of course, it's always when it's too late or when we're in severe pain that we really get up and we really move. And uh, I wanted to connect what you just heard Malcolm say because I believe one way you could look at what he was saying is that's wishful thinking on his part. The fact that black people were waking up and that they were experiencing a new type of thinking. Uh, and he was right. Of course, he was right at that time. That the, And that new way of thinking was brought about by him. Now, if Elijah Muhammad was involved in that in some kind of way, well, um, we'll never know because we never really heard uh, Elijah Muhammad talk very much, you know, um, and this new type of thinking was something that was, was uh, confined to the 1960s as far as the masses goes, you know, and Elijah Muhammad had been around since 1933 and that new type of thinking hadn't really taken hold till after Malcolm came on the scene. And uh, yeah, I'm going to give him credit for that because, uh, you know, he just was, he just would, it, it is what it is. He was a master teacher. He just was, you know, uh, naturally he was that. Uh, but to go back to what he was saying about, you know, uh, around the world, black men are awakening and, and uh, they're moving in, in a direction that, you know, um, is unknown to the powers that be, that they're, we're, we're moving somewhere as a people, you know, uh, worldwide. This new way of thinking is taking hold and they, and that that we're waking up you know um just think about that in terms of where we are today where did that awakening go to where did that new type of thinking where has it taken us what have we what have we evolved into as a result of that waking up process that Malcolm talked about and that that new way of thinking that he expressed in that little short clip because it's very critical to what I want to talk about in this video and the title of that speech as you can see the end of white world supremacy is even more critical and it is it really is a, a telltale sign right and one of the main reasons why he was eliminated because of talk like that, because of thinking like that, you know. And uh, I read a quote. I'm going to try to find it. I'm going to try to put it in this video. It says something. And you'll probably see it on the screen because I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to find it. It said, if if, if you really want to know who has power or something like that, I'll, I'll try to get it. If you really want to know who, who really has power in a society, find out who you can't criticize, something like that. 
And to speak to speak against white supremacy, of course, he was playing a dangerous game, you know. And when Dr. King talked about poverty and why there are 40 million people who are impoverished in this country, that was playing a dangerous game because now you're shining a, a light, you know, in the darkness. You know, I, I, I did this thing one time. I quoted a line from the, the movie, the, Invisible, the original Invisible Man. And what I said at the time is that, the, 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 that character of the original Visible Band is what the people that really have power in this country, they're like. They're like the original Visible Man. And there's a quote in that in that movie where he's talking about um, how an invisible man can rob, can steal, can commit murder. And, and, and nobody would know it was him because he was invisible. You know, he could, he could rule the world, even he said. An invisible man can rule the world. That was one of the quotes from that movie. And he's right, because we have a bunch of invisible men that we don't see, we don't know their name, their names, who run this shit, right? Who really, who really, who really run this nation and world? As I, as as was, the facts were laid out in the video I did, working for the American Dream, and I hope that's that some of you, if not all, of you got a chance to watch that video. I'm going to promote it again. It's on YouTube. You know, I, I I took snippets of it from from uh, and placed it in, in one of the last videos I did. I wasn't allowed to uh, show it on YouTube, so I put it on my uh, FS Avenger page. And it's some very very critical key information to understand why we're in the condition we are in today. It's not by accident, right? It's not by accident that that you know the black community is in the condition it's in today, and that we haven't really moved hardly anywhere from where Malcolm was talking about we with this new awakening and taking and we were on the moves. No, we were and he couldn't see that at the time of course. You know, it, it did look like a hopeful time. It did look like a new time. It did look like we were gonna do something. But their forces in this nation, those invisible men, are not gonna allow that. And that was pointed out in that in that in that documentary, um, Working for the American Dream. As he as uh what's his name? I'm gonna call him Howard Zim. Uh Noam Chomps he was quoting people like Adam Smith, who um, was talking about the masses of mankind, how basically the uh, the elite, you know, uh, were in charge of this country at the very beginning. These were all rich, land-holding, slave-holding, I mean, besides that, land-holding, slave-holding white men who were in the Senate. And they were not elected. They were selected because they were rich and because they were wealthy. I guess some some of you probably didn't know that. I know I, if I knew it, I forgot it. That the original uh, senators in this country, they that ran this country, were all from the from the were all wealthy land holding, slave holding white males, as you can see in the image of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, whatever the case may be. And their main goal was to control and hold on to their wealth as as much as that's possible, and to keep it. Uh, protected from those who didn't have any wealth from taking away from them or, or having them to share that wealth with anybody else. That's their main objective. And to create the illusion that we live in a fair and a de democratic society where everybody loves democracy and freedom and all this other horse shit because that's what it is when it's all about them gaining and controlling power and wealth. They want to, they want to, concentrating wealth and power into their hands because they're sick they're sick they're hoarders of wealth people hoard all kinds of shit people hoard you know cats and whatever dogs they hoard wealth it's a mental illness they're sociopaths the ones that that one tenth of one percent of the elite super rich white motherfuckers that control this country so when Malcolm talks about the new awakening of black people and we're waking up and we're on the move and you know, we're, we're going to make all these chains. No, well, that, you know, it, 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 that, well, of course, that cannot be allowed. And that nobody knew what direction they were. Of course, they knew what direction we're moving in. They always know what direction we're moving in. I made a video here recently called The Dumb Down. Now, in that, in that video, it showed pigs, how pigs were studied for, you know, for months to see how, see how they moved and what their behavior was so they could be trapped and killed. But they had to study them first. They knew where they, they and once they studied them and they saw how they moved and how they acted, there was no mystery to what they were going to do in any given situation. 
and it became easier to to trap them. And what they did was they killed. They had to shoot, go out and hunt down and shoot the pigs that wouldn't go in the trap, the pigs that were hit to the the trick, because there were some of the pigs that wouldn't go into the trap. They kept their their families outside the trap. Well, the other pigs they they, they they eating all the free corn, they eating up, but they didn't realize they were in the trap. The ones outside, the couple that stayed outside, they had the, the they actually went out and hunted them down individually and shot them. And that's they they called that dumbing down the sounder. And the sounder is a group of pigs, right? And when they kill people like Malcolm X, that's what they doing to us. They were dumbing down our sounder by killing Malcolm X and Dr. King, people like them. And then the ones again, like I said, that they did they, they you know. They don't kill. They can buy you off. You offer you position and offer you money and wealth. Now, here's the thing about it. Malcolm could have been, might not have, we might not have known about him if his white teacher had encouraged him. That, yeah, yeah. When, he, when Malcolm said, you know, I want to be a lawyer, Mr. Dzinski, whatever the fuck's name in the movie, he really did, that really did happen. That was a true story. If his white teacher would say, sure, Malcolm, you could be a lawyer. Things might be different. Might not even know his, but might not even know about a Malcolm X. So there are probably many, many other Malcolm X out there right now that we'll never know about, never hear from. Why? Because they work in the corporate America. They, they're lawyers. They're, you know, doing other things. And we're comfortable now. Black people are comfortable. You know, we're living our so-called American dreams. Most of us. I mean, for the most part, you hear people, you hear black people say, where would you rather be? What other country would you rather be in than America? Where else would you rather live besides the United States? Where else can you live a lifestyle, attain the amount of wealth, have the many opportunities that, that, that you do besides the United States. And really nowhere, if you really think about it, I mean, there may be a few places, but there's not really many. You know, and I doubt that any kid can match, you know, uh, the United States as far as the opportunities you have to to attain wealth and to, and to live a comfortable life. That's why the majority of people want to come here and really don't want to go anywhere else pretty much, you know, unless they already have money. And they come here to get, a lot of people come here and they're smart to come and get their money and they go back to where they come from. I mean, this is a place to, you know, to do that. But uh, that's usually the, the quote, you know, where do you, where else would you rather live besides the United States? You know, uh, what other what other country in the world would you rather go to and live in? And black people say this too. Eh? A lot of black people say, say the same thing. But the one thing they leave out, leave out and it's, it's, it's our biggest problem. This is our biggest fucking problem as a group of people, not being able to see this. You say that, which other country would you rather live in besides the United States? What they leave out, and what I try to talk to you about all the fucking time, because it's fucking reality, and I'll use this, this one thing I say all the time is, what goes up, baby, has to come down. What goes up must come down. This is our big, biggest problem. Yeah, there is no other country we'd rather be in today than the United States. But that may not be the fucking case, and it will not be the case tomorrow. Yes, yeah, a beautiful thing today. But how long will it last? How long can it continue to be what it is today? When you have the people, the masters of mankind, still in complete and total control of this thing. And again, the, the most obvious and the most eye-opening example of that, of course, is the morning of 9-11. They actually show their face briefly. They actually didn't show their face, but you could, you knew it was them. You had to, if you didn't know that, then I can't help you. If you, if you can't see that, then I, I can't do nothing for you. I would say pray for you. I can't even pray for you because I don't believe in your God. So I can't even do that shit for you. All I can do is hope that you find a, a convenient way, a Mickey Mouse cocktail, or find the easiest way to take your life and life of your family when the time comes. That's all I can hope for you. All I can, that's all I can do for you. I can't do much for you past that. You see? And this is this is where the problem lies, and our, our lack of ability to see that America, as we know it, will it has to and will come to a fucking end. And and uh, again, as I continue to say, that just like the World Trade Centers, they were two what they call white elephants. They they weren't able to uh, rent out all the space. There were other things going on. Well, they killed. They, like I said, they they killed multiple birds with one stone on that day. But one of that's one of the main one of the reasons because of that the, those buildings just were too top heavy they didn't they didn't uh they weren't generating the, the income you know uh that was necessary to justify them being in existence you know they had a problem with this best asbestos asbestos had to be removed out of those buildings and that that's that was another problem this was a huge cost to that 
I mean, that's just the physical structure. But then there's other things, of course, behind that. But those are some of the main reasons that 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 uh, what took place on that day happened on that day. And one of the main ones, also but the biggest one, I feel, the, and the one that nobody talks about, and the one that nobody really understands or can figure out, was the way those buildings were destroyed, the mechanism by which those buildings were destroyed. Because, again, I remind you, and I remind you a thousand times more, those buildings did not collapse. Those buildings were turned into dust by something. The only thing left of those buildings was the structural steel. And whatever contents were left were turned into, into little bite-sized pieces, pieces that were no bigger than a foam pad, as one firefighter described. So they had something called a bucket brigade on a rubble pile, you know, where they're trying to find bodies and all that and try to find, you know, if there's any survivors. They had something called the, 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 the only, everything that was left in those buildings beside the structural steel, you could put into a bucket. All the desks, all the glass, all the fucking filing cabinets, whatever else, the the, the carpeting, the, the toilets, the whatever, was all dustified. And, uh, yeah, so when we talk about ending white supremacy, that's not going, that's not going to happen. That <laughs> we'll be, we're going, we'll be, we'll be out of here before that takes place. And there are a lot of the reasons why white supremacy doesn't, it's, it's not going anywhere because, you know, and I talk about this and I guess people just don't, don't, uh, believe it, understand the kid, understand is the fact that, you know, uh, what, what has been done to us, we don't, we still haven't gotten down to that. We haven't really tallied up the loss or the cost of, our enslavement because it was it was multifaceted and happened on many many levels it was just a physical change look at Malcolm look how light skin Malcolm is that was one way that we were altered physically we could see that you know we have a lot of light light skin and high yellow light bright damn near white octoon doctor all these different colors that that we are that was all as a result of the interaction between white men and black African women involuntarily involuntarily of course but if, if they didn't know, if they didn't know, uh, just like it, it affects our physiology, we have somebody, now we don't know which one, of, which one of Malcolm X's ancestors was a white man, but we can see it in his face, we can see it in the color of his hair, that there was a white man in his, in, his, in his family somewhere, and maybe multiple white men in his family somewhere, right? And so we can see it physically how it's affecting him, how it affected him in his height and his, the complexion of his skin, color of his hair. But how has it, how did it affect him and people and all of us psychologically? What psychological traits do we have from these white men? These sick white men, I'm going to say, that would take advantage of a, a girl, a little girl and, and, and impregnate a child and have her die in childbirth and the baby barely live. What kind of beast is that? And then what, what, did, what did that, how is that, that DNA affecting us? We never, that's another issue that has to be dealt with to show why when this thing comes down and it will, and it's going to be brought down deliberately. And if the, if the people, and it's really not, you don't have to be a fucking rocket scientist to see this. You don't have to be, you don't, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. You ain't got to be, you barely have to have a brain in your head to see. If they collapse this motherfucker and they shut down everything and everything in the martial, court, martial law is declared for whatever reason. And you can't function like you normally do. You have to depend on the government for everything, so to speak, like standing online to get food and water, whatever the case may be. You know, it's, it's going to be a bloody fucking mess. That's all you have to do is just to allow, just, just to shut everything down and allow people to be somewhere where they don't know what is going to happen next. Where they can't figure out where to get their, their next bite of food or their next cup of water from. Just let that be the case for a very short, it doesn't have to be a long period, just, just a couple of weeks. That's all. And, and, and hell will break loose in this country and there'll be bloodshed all throughout this motherfucker. Inside and outside of every, every community, there'll be blood flowing through the streets. Because we have to have a certain, like I said, in America as it exists today is a very highly specialized environment that only exists. That's what we say. Make the statement. Well, where would you rather be? But here in America, well, of course, nowhere, because it, this is the only place you can live like we're living now. It's the only place on the planet where you can live the way we live. We live right now in the way that we do. And uh, that's what makes it special. It's Yeah, it is special. It's very special, very unique. But the biggest problem is that it won't, it cannot be sustained. It will not last. It has to come to a fucking end. And we have to eventually, over time, and a lot of time, I don't know how much time, we're going to come back to nature. To living like we're supposed to live, which is in a grass hut, 
somewhere or a wood hut, a mud hut, whatever it is, growing your own crops locally, taking just what you need from the environment, not much more, and allowing life to flow around you in every other form that's supposed to be in. And there's supposed to be billions and billions of other life forms here. Most, most of which now have either been brought into extinction or about to be extinct. But we don't think about that. We don't care about that. We don't give a fuck about that. But for some reason, we should be alive. But everything else should die. And we don't never even think about the shit. Never even cross our mind how fucked up, how sick and insane that really is. Don't care, care less than the shit. But again, somebody should care about you picking cotton to chop a sugar cane or tobacco. You shouldn't be up to your fucking black neck and cotton for the next 2,000 years. That shouldn't be the case. But fuck everything and everybody else. Again, it goes back to what happened to us during that time of us being enslaved. You know, we never, never properly dealt with that issue. The psychological, mental, spiritual damage that was truly done. And until we deal with that, white supremacy ain't going nowhere because white supremacy is inside us. We are white, black white supremacists, just don't even realize it. We are many me's. We are just like them in blackface and refuse to accept that. Same appetites, wants, and desires as those white elites. They know that. They instilled that in you. You're a, we are like a denuded form of them. We have all the desires, but none of their power. We have all their lust, but none of their ability to create that, whatever we lust after. They create what we lust after. They're our drug dealers, you know, for the, for the fucking fine cars and the fine material shit that we, that we like, the, the electronic bullshit and the technological shit that we manipulate like fucking chimpanzees, but we can't produce for ourselves. We can't, we can't create a, a, a place and a space where we can do all that for ourselves as so-called black people. And it doesn't, doesn't we don't, not, not moving the slices by that. I was watching, so I, gotta make, I gotta make this video. I gotta make a video, create this video. I was watching documentary again, talking about China and talking about how they got from where they were back when Mao was in power to where they are today. And this is really an incredible and amazing fucking story. How lightning fast that took place with these people. You know, and I, I still say Mao was right. He just, he just, with the problem, I think with Mao, he was right to, to keep his pe to, to have his country under the control that he did, but he just went too far. You know, it was just too, it was just too, um, too oppressive, so to speak. He made that shit too hard with people. I didn't, well, I guess I did. I guess I did know because they were they were something almost like Korea is today. That's how strict it was, you know, to where people were like starving to death and shit. Where that wasn't really necessary because of the programs that he had in place, you know. And really, all all that happened was that they loosened some of the reins of the government of China and allowed the people the ability to, you know, uh, earn money and to become going to business for themselves. And it exploded into what it is. But I got I got to do a video about that. I got to do a video on that. But if they had stayed, if they could have did that and still kept some of that revolutionary spirit going, you know, uh, especially thing with the bikes, they don't realize how important that shit is, the, how important the bike was. Because everybody rode bikes in China at one time. They even talk about it in documentary. Everybody, had, everybody rode bikes. When Nixon went to China back in 72, whatever it was, every fucking body had a bike. They don't understand to this day how important that was to to have, to have stayed something. And it, the, the, the bottom line is, we should be trying to stay as close to the earth as we possibly can, stay as stay as close to nature as we possibly can. That's what that's what it should be, because we're going back. It's just a matter of time. You know, um, the earth is not filled with unlimited resources. This is the problem that a lot of Negroes have. They have no ability to see this to see many, many things. Things run out. Things come to an end. Like I tell you, if you if you ever uh, awake at night and there's a full moon, look up at the full moon. Look up at it. And what do you see? A giant fucking rock in space. You see a giant space rock. A lifeless rock. Well, that's the earth minus life. The moon is the earth minus life. They're both the same thing. Because one has life, one doesn't. Right? And what has happened here, see, when back during, now, back during the time when people used shovels and picks and there was no machinery to dig whatever resource they needed out of the earth, 
Well, then you had a case, you know, people could live, you know, we could, we could probably live for an extremely long time like that. But now we have the ability to dig out tons upon hundreds of thousands of tons of material out the earth every day, you know. And how long can you think, how long do you think that's, and then the population is growing. You know, the population, you're talking about, you're talking about 9, 10 billion people. When it's supposed to be a healthy human population, there's a billion people or less. And that's just proven out by you know, this history and the history of, of, of the population of mankind. You see that, that that's what it is. Really less than a billion people. It's a healthy human population. Like a, you have healthy other other populations of other things. This is why we have COVID-19. This man manipulated virus and you have all these variants that are more getting getting more contagious every day. Even people even people who are double vaccinated or getting the shit. Even they're not, they're not, they're not getting real sick, but they're, they're getting the, the virus. That's why I said, still, I told you that long. I told you when it first hit, it's a test virus. They're just testing this virus to to see its effect and see what effect it has on us psychologically, physiologically, and every and other kind of way. So they hit us with the main, the main bomb. The main one hasn't come out yet. The one that kills you in less because they they, they, talk, they talk about it briefly. They talked about it very briefly um, early on, this variant that had, had arisen in China that killed you in less than two weeks. There was no cure. Once you got that, you was dead. But then they stopped talking about it. Did it just disappear? No, it's still there. They're just waiting to, to spring it on us and so they can really reduce the population down. Let everybody get, you know, get the, you know, get, get that, get that good uh, virus medication up in them, I guess the case may, whatever the case may be. But, um, this is what we're looking at, population reduction. And again, the main point is not to forget that, yeah, there are people who, for lack of better terms, are masters of mankind. They have they have hijacked and taken over pretty much the whole planet and all its resources. A very small population of very sick, very wealthy, very pop, very powerful, white, and now other color men that they mixed in with them that... Uh, that really control this whole thing and decide, you know, they treat us like farm animals. You know, basically that they see us like farm animals because they can do what they want with us and we can't do shit to them. Why? Because they're invisible men. You, you don't know who they are. You can't see them. They can rob, they can steal, they can kill, they can rule the world. And nobody would ever know that they were there because they're invisible. And so, again, as I continue to say, we have problems that we haven't even thought about yet. And we're not thinking about because now we're all comfortable. We're fat and sassy, sitting in the hood, full, bellies are full. You got a warm bed to sleep in. You got a little car to drive around in. You got some, you know, whatever, clothes to wear. And so, hey, man, what the fuck? What's the problem? But there's a fucking serious problem. The symptoms of which have been, 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 uh, been, we have been being warned for a very long time. We've been ignoring the symptoms of something that's going to kill the majority of us and make the rest of us so fucked up, we're gonna wish we was dead. And we refuse to understand this. So I wanted to talk about what you, what Malcolm said in the beginning, because it's very key. Um, and then look at where we are now in comparison to what he was talking about, this new awakening, This because it was a new time. And he's right, there, but this was, there was, this was very new. You know, a very new way of thinking. And he talked about how the fact that, how many Negroes would you think would go out uh, and, and go see somebody like a, like a, uh, uh, what's his name? I can't think of, even a Michael Max, if he was around today, will go out during Christmas time. He's he said that. How, how hard does he get the Negroes to come out? You know, anytime, especially during the holiday, especially during, he was, you know, especially during Christmas time, he talked about that. Because we're, in, again, in the same mindset as those who have enslaved us. Because they didn't just enslave us physically, they enslaved us mentally, psychologically, and spiritually, they've enslaved us. And we refuse to see that or understand it in the slightest least. And so therefore we're saying we want to die, ultimately. Whether we know we're saying that shit or not, we're saying we want to die. We do not want life on this fucking planet. As a matter of fact, we, we I continue to say once we put on those slave ships, we were dead. We were killed. Now we're just waiting to die. You know, we're just waiting for the actual physical process to take place. We were actually killed. If we survived the middle passage, we were killed. Right? And, and, and put under control of people who decide to, to this day whether we live or die, whether our children have a future or not. And so we're still the same farm animals we basically were to them when we were slaves. They basically have the same control of us now as they did then. This is just now it's just like, you know, I guess 
when you go to these safari parks where you let the, the animals run wild and people ride in cages so just to give them the sensation that they're free when they're really not so we, we have the sensation that we have freedom when we no we don't no we can never we can never ever be free again you know uh unless a miracle takes place and we free our minds and our psychology and we really we really study in depth what happened to us and we put our history under a microscope and do an autopsy like examination of it where there's no emotion involved all we want are the facts we don't care what where do they lead get the facts and then once you have the facts you can piece together a course of action to undo the damage that we suffer from to this day because when this thing flips we're not gonna be ready for it the only thing we're ready to be ready to do is to die is to kill and die and don't die and kill however you want to say it when this motherfucker implodes and it will it's just a matter of time it's all a matter of time and the people that have power they don't care because again they're sick all they care about and all, they, all they're focused on is their is their wealth and their power what happens to the rest of the world obviously you know they're not looking at that they're not concerned about that how do how do i how do i get more wealth how do i get more power this is where obviously their thinking is what does anybody need with a hundred trillion dollars? And it's supposed to be the wealth of one family, the Rothschild. It's supposed to be how much they and they've been in, they've been in power, they've been accumulating wealth since the fucking seventeenth century. So it's possible they can have that. What do you need with a, what do you need with a hundred billion dollars? Even on a hundred trillion, but this is what they're supposed to have in their in their in, in their hands right now. You know, uh, and there's other ones is almost as, almost as wealthy. We know one Jay Jay with Jeff Bezos, eight hundred million, whatever. And then there's a there's a, I think I think one just hit a trillion. Uh, this other guy for what? What is what's the point of that? This is one person, and then we're all many me's. We want something have this, a similar desire. You know, it may not be as big. Of course, you don't want a trillion. Maybe you want a trillion dollars. Maybe you just want a you know a couple hundred thousand dollars. You want to live comfortable as we see comfortable people. But it happens. Look how it goes. We're fucked up, and don't see that. And as long as we stay fucked up, then they're gonna they're gonna be in power. You know, uh, we can't unfuck ourselves, <laughs> and of course we can't do that. Not under these conditions. You know, we have to be brought down, and we have to be we have to be fucked up. Like we have to be in pain, we have to be in, in more pain than we ever been before. And that's before a very long time for us to understand that we have to make some changes for the possible. Excuse me, for the possibility to exist. Not for that we're going to change going to take place, but for the possibility to exist for any change, true change in the minds of so-called black people. Otherwise, forget it. Uh, it's, again, we're on a one-way trip right back to where we started from, which is the fucking cotton field. We're we'll sending you all at the ball, partying and having a good time, waiting for the clock to strike 12 so we can go back to our proper position. And, and if we don't make those changes, yes, that's our proper position, a cotton field, a sugar cane field, a tobacco field. If we don't make the adjustments and the changes we need, Okay, to separate ourselves for real to, from people that we should have never had any contact with, then it's a wrap. You know, just learn learn some old Negro spirituals. You know, take your kids out to a, a field where they with dandelions on, just having practice, picking the dandelions up, one putting them in the sack, so they'll they'll be ready to to go back to to where they belong, and that'll be it. And so, um. You know that's what I had to say in this video. I don't want to take a long time. You know I had some other things I'm preparing for uh, next week. Next week I'll be. I'm, I'm still debating whether I want to do a YouTube live or whether I want to do a Facebook live. And I'm leaning toward a YouTube live, but uh, we'll see what happens. I might just. I think that might be best for me to do a YouTube live. And uh, because I haven't done a live in a long time. Um, but I got. To, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do it. Fuck, I'm gonna do a YouTube live. I'll just. What I'll do is I'll just record it. I'll record on two cameras, I think. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll use both my cameras to record on. I'll use, um, yeah, I'll use my phone and I'll use my computer. I think I have to do that because I don't know how YouTube works, um, how fast they work. <laughs> if I get, if I can get it um, in a box. Well, let me, let me, let me say, let me say I'm, I'm going to do a YouTube live. Um, next week, the day before uh, New Year's, the day before the thirtieth, and the, and the thirty first, I'm gonna do a series of of lives. You know, um, 
But you gotta, you gotta. I think I'll do a preview so that you'll be ready to, to you know, chime in. I won't be answering any questions, so you, you I mean, I won't be answering the chat. I won't be chatting. So don't feel bad if I don't chat back with you because I'll be too busy talking as fast as I can. <laughs> you know, try to get that shit into the box and get it sealed up. But anyway, uh, that's the video. Thank you for your time. Take it easy.